Good morning. My name is Michael Monroe, and I have the honor of serving with our campus development team here at New Life Church. I also lead our creative and production teams at our downtown Little Rock campus. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a very familiar story, and this passage of scripture comes from 1 Samuel chapter 17. It's the story of David and Goliath. Now, I have a feeling that they gave me this story because I am six foot seven. It's hard to tell with me sitting down, but that is nothing in comparison to the giant that is described in Goliath. Goliath was the champion of the Philistine army. And then the story kicks off with the Philistine army going against King Saul and the Israelites. This story begins where Goliath would come out and taunt the Israelite army. They would basically for 40 days, he came out and was like, if anyone would fight me and beat me, you guys basically get to take us as slaves. However, if Goliath, he wins, then the Israelites become slaves to the Philistines. This terrified the Israelites. There wasn't anyone that could withstand or go out and fight them. So in her comes David, who again was anointed by Samuel to be the future king. David was the youngest of eight brothers. He was small. He was kind of forgotten about. He was a shepherd, right? And so he enters the scene because Jesse, his father, says, hey, take some food down to your brothers who are on the front line of this battle and go down there and make sure they get fed. And so he obeys his father. He leaves the sheep and takes the food to the front line of the battle. When he gets down there, he hears Goliath coming out every day, taunting the Israelites, saying that he's basically going to defy the armies of the Lord. And this really stirred David's heart. He was like, well, is anybody going to fight this guy? He then hears from King Saul and some of the people in the camp that he, there's a reward. Matter of fact, you're going to have great wealth. Whoever defeats this guy is going to have great wealth is gonna have tax exemptions. Who all wants tax exemptions? I want tax exemptions. Uh, then he offers uh, his own daughters, King Saul's daughters in marriage for whoever defeats Goliath. His brothers were there hearing, seeing David like, why are you here? They even called him uh, conceited and wicked for being down there on the battle when he should be tending his own sheep. Now David was just obeying his father and bringing uh, the food to them. However, David says, you know what? He goes to King Saul and says, you know what? I, I can take this guy on. And King Saul says, well, you're just a youth. You're just a boy. How, how are you going to go take this guy on? And David says, well, God has been with me as I fought a lion and I fought a bear and killed both of them. And if the same God is with me then and got me through those things, he's going to bring me through this next thing. And so Saul says, okay, the Lord be with you. Go. You can, you, can, you can fight him. However, take my armor. And so Saul gives David all of his armor and David can't barely move. It's too big for him, right? So he's like, no, I can't take that. All he takes is his staff, his sling, and he picks up five smooth stones in his pouch to go out and fight Goliath. So as David goes out on the battlefield, Goliath sees him approaching. And he's like, what, you're bringing just a stick to battle? Who is this kid? He, he basically says this is a joke. And so David grabs one singular stone and slings it and strikes him in the forehead and kills Goliath. After that, he goes and takes Goliath's sword and chops off his head, takes it back to the camp, takes his armor to his own tent. And the, the Philistine army fled in terror because their champion had been defeated. Saul then looks around and is like, who is this kid? Who is this young man? Who's his father? And so David comes and tells Saul, I am the son of Jesse from Bethlehem of Judah. There are so many things that we can take away from this story. This is a battle as old as time, right? This is good versus evil. We, since really the fall of man in Genesis chapter three, when the serpent came to wage war on God and his people, this has been kind of throughout scripture the entire time. We see this theme through scripture of good versus evil and that there will need to be a champion to fight on our behalf. Ephesians 6, 12 in the NLT reads, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. In the story, we not only see that the Israelites are scared of becoming enslaved by the Philistines, but they don't have a champion to fight and are about to lose the ground that God had already given them. I believe that Goliath in this sense represents the serpent or the evil that Ephesians 6 is talking about. 
Goliath waged war on God's people. He was mighty in power in this earthly realm. He promised to enslave. David was just a shepherd, but he was anointed to be king. He was young and faithful and called by God. He lived under the covering of his father. He didn't take or accept Saul's armor or what the world told him he needed. He just took his faith in the Lord, his sling, and his stone. David then crushes the head of the serpent, in this case, Goliath. It would be easy to say that we are all Davids and that with faith in the Lord, we can get through anything and we can be victorious in all things, whatever that lies in front of us, which this is true with the Holy Spirit. We can get through just about anything. And I'm not saying that we win every battle, but with God, all things are truly possible. Even Jesus said himself in Matthew 17, 20, I tell you the truth. If you had a faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. You see, David had this kind of faith. He had gone through the trials with the lion and the bear and God brought him through victoriously. This is the type of faith that, yes, the Lord is asking us to have. And it is very important to remember all that God has already brought you through. But the truth is, as I read this story, I see that we're all just the scared Israelites. We're not David. If the champion doesn't win, we will be slaves to that evil forever. The Israelites were waiting on a savior and a young man, David, showed up on the scene. David is our example of the coming champion our champion, the Lord Jesus, who has come down to earth, crushed the head of the serpent, defeated death, and won the victory for us so we can be with God in heaven for eternity. Colossians 1, 13 and 14 reads like this, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Just like the Israelites were scared, looking for a champion to avoid slavery. Jesus came to rescue us from our slavery to sin. So when I read this story about David, I see the telling of a coming king, Jesus, who will save us from sin, who will deliver us from the evil for all eternity. He was our champion, our Messiah, our Lord, and our eternal King. I pray that this message blesses you and you have a wonderful day.